So finally in 2021, I decided to give The Witcher 3 a fair chance. I did play The Witcher 1 back in 2007 when I was rocking a bowl cut and had a beach themed MySpace page with Green Day playing in the background, basically letting everyone know that I was cool. Well, it didn't work, but I still got to be a game nerd and play The Witcher 1, and I absolutely loved it at the time. I ended up skipping on The Witcher 2 for various life reasons, some of them due to the bowl cut. And I have a confession, I actually did play The Witcher 3 in 2015 on a PS4, so this video is clickbait. But I only played it for a really, really short amount of time, not really enough to say that I've played it before, so forgive me. Now in 2021, I'm getting my first real The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt experience, and well, I think it's really I'm guessing you were wondering what that beep word was, weren't ya? Well, for the sake of keeping you here longer than you need to be to increase video watch time and ad revenue, of course, I'm not going to tell you until the very end. I learned that from Mr. B- I'm just, I'm just kidding with you guys. I absolutely love this game so far, and I started loving it even more when I saw that they brought back the bowl cut. If you guys want me to bring back the bowl cut for future streams and videos, let me know below in the comments. Bang and Bull Cut Bobby is at your service. All right, let's get serious now. So I'm kind of upset that I didn't have the time to give it a proper chance back in 2015. I really had no idea that The Witcher 3 was this in depth and well done, and not in just one area of the game, multiple areas. As many of you guys know, I do love RPGs and have recently done playthroughs of Dragon Age Inquisition and Skyrim, both of which I really enjoyed, and both of which will remain in my top list of RPGs of all time. But with that said, as far as an initial impression goes, The Witcher 3 I think has pulled me in a little deeper than both of those excellent titles, and that says a lot. There's something about this game that I just seem to really vibe with. Now keep in mind that this video is not going to be an official review. I've only got around 30 hours or so into the game, and I'll likely do an in-depth review in the future. So hit that subscribe button if you like RPG content. So where do we start? Well, I think one of the most obvious praises for this game, and I'll get it out of the way now, is the way that it looks. Honestly, if this game came out as a new title this year in 2021, I wouldn't have been complaining about the graphics. There's really nothing 2015 about the way that this game looks, it's pretty phenomenal. I am playing on a PC, so this may be different for those playing on the older consoles, I'm not really sure. I'd have to say that judging by what I have seen so far, I think most of this comes down to the excellent work on lighting in the game, and of course the attention to detail from CDPR. When you're running or riding across the continent while the sun is setting and the trees are swaying, you really get an immersive fantasy world feeling, and that's one of the biggest things that I myself look for in fantasy RPGs. Sometimes I even find myself meditating just to pass some of the time to get back to dawn or dusk. Am I the only one here? Let me know. The attention to detail in this game is also really well done. So well that I almost want to tell CDPR that you don't have to do that good. Obviously I'm kidding here, but it goes to show you that a lot of other games, even ones that I truly enjoyed, come nowhere close to this level of detail. The detail on the little things such as the paintings on the walls, the furniture in a tavern, or the various items that are scattered about, really really add to this game and its immersion. If we do get a Witcher 4, CDPR has to set the bar damn high for themselves, and I think anything less would be kind of a smack in the face to us consumers. So yeah, the visuals are pretty outstanding. I am hoping though that the terrain and the environment kind of changes up a bit more as I keep playing, so I can get a little more contrast or variety in the setting, but overall mostly just praises here. While we're on the topic of immersion, I can't forget the soundtrack like I did in my Inquisition review. This is absolutely some of the best music I've heard in an RPG to date. I plan on playing this soundtrack on loop for just about everything in life from here on out. The music also is really unique, it's not just your basic fantasy sounds that you may get from many other games, as great as some of those soundtracks can still be. <laughs> 
In The Witcher 3, there's instruments and sound effects that you probably can't name off the top of your head. The Witcher's music is The Witcher's music, it's not just some fantasy adventure music. It also has a really authentic feeling to it, and when I'm using my headphones, it kind of makes you feel like you're almost at an orchestra concert. It's pretty incredible. Now add cinematic storytelling on top of the visuals and the music, and voila, we got ourselves a game of the year, and likely well deserved even though this is still my initial impressions video. The funny thing is that I haven't even really gotten into the characters or the gameplay yet. Let me just say right now that I did not expect fully voice acted cinematics for basically every quest line that I've embarked on, which so far in my game includes the side quests. This is one of the few games where I really have an actual true interest in experiencing the side quests for their story, as opposed to just doing them for a quick XP gain. The only thing holding me back from doing all of them is time constraints, and realizing that if I really delve into everything in this game, my content on the channel will suffer as I won't have time to play any of the upcoming new games. Most of the quests and stories behind them have been really kind of an emotional roller coaster. Without giving away any spoilers, the Baron quest, for example, has unfolded to be such an incredible but terrifying storyline to experience. It kind of reminds me of Game of Thrones with Jamie Lannister. The emotions that you go through with your relation to how you feel about a character really creates an immersive experience, and it keeps the game feeling like a never ending page turner. CDPR's seemingly lack of fear for not holding back on some of these stories and how dark they can truly be has been a part of this game that seeps into me, and it's actually refreshing because most other games would never tell stories this in depth for the fear of backlash. Some topics can be a little controversial or just simply too dark for some people. But the way I look at it is the darker a game can get, the brighter it can also get as you work to overcome the challenges. This kind of goes along with player agency in the game, which seems really well done so far, as some of your decisions that you make will have a big effect on how the future of the game unfolds. This adds even more exciting drama to your playthrough, because these tough topics, you now have a say in how some of them play out. As far as characters go, I think it's safe to say Geralt is pretty much a badass, and his history and in general who he is as a character is something that a lot of people are going to enjoy assuming the role as. Apart from him being just a badass hero kind of dude, well mostly a hero, he also has many qualities about him that make him relatable to people in general, should I say. For example, he definitely wears his heart on his sleeve, which can be for better or for worse depending on the situation. Most of us have been there before in terms of our own love lives and relationships and crushes. And to see Geralt fall down similar paths that don't always lead to what you think a guy like Geralt may experience is really cool and it makes you more attached to him as a person, or should I say a witcher, rather than him just being a high and mighty fantasy character. The rest of the characters have also been great so far. Ciri, Triss, Yennefer, the Baron, Vesemir, Kara, and many more, and they all offer unique experiences and personalities, as opposed to them just all feeling like basic NPC characters. I don't know much about the Wild Hunt up to this point, but the other enemy characters that you come across, such as the Crones, are all very unique from each other, and it's very, very evident that CDPR did not hold back on spending the time and resources in creating these villainous characters, or even the ones that straddle the line between good and evil. All of the non-humanoid type enemies have also been a lot of fun to come across and fight against. Referring to the bestiary in the game for more information on creatures that you encounter, I think is a really nice addition and it gives you that monster hunter tracker type feeling. Many other games I don't even click on the bestiary, but in The Witcher 3 it's really well done and actually valuable. And the last topic I'll touch on for this video is the gameplay itself, from combat to crafting to Gwent. So the combat I actually do enjoy, but it's not my favorite combat style of all time. At first it took a little bit to get into, but I did eventually come around to enjoying it. Playing on hard mode, I'm kind of playing it like a Dark Souls game, in terms of looking for animations to dodge and then striking, and making sure not to get into the button smashing mode, which will of course get you killed in Souls games, but also in The Witcher games, although not nearly to the same extent. 
So I do enjoy the combat, but the controls overall sometimes feel a bit weird in and out of combat. The crossbow feels kind of weird, so I do see room for improvement. I am playing on mouse and keyboard though, which many have said controller will make it feel much better, so keep that in mind. It's sometimes difficult to turn Geralt the way that I want him to face, which can be a little frustrating, but overall it's still good. I just can't give it the insane level of praise that I have for most other areas in this game. I will say that this is one of the few games where I actually feel like I'm a sword dancer. Geralt is smooth and quick, and it's really fun to experience and witness. Using the signs, which is the Witcher's magic, has also been great and adds some variety to the martial combat. I haven't gotten deep into crafting or alchemy, but I will say that it's fairly simple but still has an in-depth feeling to it. There's so many different materials that you can gather. Those of you who have OCD will probably hate that the map shows all of the gatherable foliage because it's literally every couple steps that you take. But the game still makes these systems pretty straightforward, with the actual process of crafting armor and weapons, or brewing potions, etc. I also do not have much experience with the card game Gwent, I'm 0-3 right now, but I will say that I do think it's a really cool side activity to have present in the game. The fact that it seems to work so well as a mini game is more evidence that CDPR did not hold back on all the side details in this game. Things that they probably could have left out and still had a great game. I also think it's cool that it's a deck building game, because this keeps it relevant for basically your entire playthrough if you're interested in it. As you progress, you can gain more and more cards and build decks from not only playing Gwent with NPCs, but also buying cards from merchants or winning them in faraway towns. I do look forward to getting more into it, but so far I think it's pretty incredible that a mini game that's not really essential to the story of a game can be so well done. So yeah, I talked about the visuals, the music, the story, and the gameplay, and my only minor complaints so far are the controls feeling a little wonky at times, and also just having the hopes of experiencing some more contrast in the already beautiful environments as I keep playing the game. I gotta admit that thinking about The Witcher 4 now is pretty crazy. If CDPR is able to hold true to their roots, which is obviously a little questionable these days with the cyberpunk release problems, The Witcher 4 could very well be an instant game of the year right when it comes out. Actually, I think The Witcher 3 was so well done that this might have raised the bar almost too high for cyberpunk, as players are of course expecting a better experience than a company's previous games. They might have bit themselves in the foot here, as CDPR can no longer create an average experience when most of its players come from The Witcher 3. This is certainly no excuse, but CDPR basically can never half-ass anything ever in the future and expect to get away with it like other companies might be able to. Now we look forward to our futures and dream about The Witcher 4 and what it could potentially be. And hey, also The Elder Scrolls 6. CDPR and Bethesda have the resources and experience to continue these games in the way that they deserve. Let's hope that actually happens. And hey, also, I don't know if The Witcher 4 has even been confirmed yet. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you're one of the ones that made it to the end of this video, definitely let me know below in the comments. I really appreciate it. As I jokingly said in the beginning of the video, watch time is actually one of the most important statistics for a channel's success or a video's success. So those of you that actually spend the time to listen to these all the way through, or even maybe if you just let them play all the way through, I really do appreciate that. It's more of a help than you could probably even know. So thank you guys so much, and uh, more content coming in the future. I didn't really plan this outro here. Yeah, see you guys.